Believe it or not, we haven't hiked on two glaciers already, but we are about to finally heli hike on top of New Zealand's longest glacier. This morning we are leaving the beautiful High Country Lodge in Twizel and we are making our way to New Zealand's tallest mountain and the jewel of the Southern Alps which is beautiful Mount Cook and the drive to get there is absolutely stunning. So we're here to take a helicopter all the way up to the Tasman Glacier and hike it and then take a helicopter back because we're not hiking all the way down. As soon as we arrive, we're meeting Tex from Texas, which is going to be our guide and a stand-up comedian. <laughs> Everyone here needs a breath test, alright? <laughs> Who was that last night? Equipped with some brand new boots, an awesome windproof jacket, some crampons and a few more gears, we are heading toward the helicopter. As soon as we board the helicopter and the propeller starts going, the tension starts building. We are about to fly above New Zealand's longest glacier and just below New Zealand's tallest mountain. We are super excited as we're about to fly through one of New Zealand's grandest and biggest landscapes. So we're going to be following the Tasman Glacier Valley right next to Araraki Mount Cook. And while we're flying in our headsets, we can hear the pilot giving us lots of commentary along the way, specifically telling us about the Tasman Lake. The Tasman Lake is where the Tasman Glacier terminates and it only actually formed in 1989 and has been expanding ever since. It's now five kilometers long and the only way we can really tell the scale is when the pilot points the little yellow boats on the lake. But this is the moment we've been waiting for. We are now landing on the Tasman Glacier. Like most helicopter landing, it's a bit of a chaos. There is a lot of noise and a lot of wind until the helicopter leaves and tech starts with a bit of a safety briefing. We can grab the crampons out of those bags. Believe it or not, putting on crampons is actually not the easiest thing ever. It looks very easy, but there is a bit of a dance to it, passing the loops and the ropes a little bit everywhere around the boots to make sure it's really well tight and secured. Once everything is done, Tex is taking the time to tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing today and a few really interesting facts about the Tasman Glacier. On top of being incredibly funny, Tex is super experienced. He has spent over a decade on New Zealand Glacier and particularly the Fox and the French Joseph Glacier and he tells us a lot of the difference between all those glaciers before taking us on a bit of a hike. The first thing I notice when we start walking along the glacier is that we are completely alone here. Us five are the only people on New Zealand's longest glacier, so that's really awesome. And amongst everything that Tex is telling us, he actually tells us that a third of New Zealand's glacial ice is actually within this very glacier. Nevertheless, it's still a retreating glacier. It's projected that by 2045, this glacier might retreat by five kilometers. Along the way, Tex is showing us all these sort of snow traps between the ice where you really don't know what's underneath them. So he's giving us a bit of a demonstration of what could be a crevasse. And the best way to handle this is to basically step over them. One of the interesting facts of doing a hike on the glacier in midday is that this is usually the time where most avalanches happen. And Tex tells us to listen for the massive rumble that could come from any side of the mountains. And as soon as we hear the rumble, we'll be able to locate where they are. And usually the avalanche happens a little bit after that. So technically, if we hear the rumble, we could be able to see the avalanche. Sadly, we don't see or hear any, but that's maybe for the better. Tex is also showing us a lot of crevasses and what they could be hiding. Some crevasses are so deep they could be hiding bigger buildings than the tallest buildings of New Zealand. That's how deep and wide they are. And he also tells us that if we were to fall through those crevasses, there is almost no chances that we will be found. This reassures us that Tex knows what he's talking about and we make sure that we follow his step very closely. And then we stumble upon a beautiful fresh glacial pool. Oh, you can drink from that. Then it looks a little bit too deep. How about drink deep water? <laughs> it tastes 
better than other glaciers. Well, I say compared to it's like a neat best tasting glacier in New Zealand. If I have to rate glaciers in tastiness of the water, that's why it's the best one. But I do things because it is much older, much bigger. And this ice right here, I've met it for, you know, about next to 10 million years, which is really, you can feel the aroma of the extra 10 million years. You can feel the dinosaur piece, and um, I can feel also the tonnage from uh, the trilobites. Because the Tasman Glacier is so big, there's different parts of the glacier that you can do a heli hike on. For instance, we're doing the Adventurer heli hike, which is pretty much in the middle of the glacier. But no matter on what heli hike you go on, this glacier is ever changing, so no two tours will be the same. However, we're going to have loads of opportunities to check out the top of the Tasman Glacier, so stick around for those videos. I'm actually really surprised at how long we actually get to spend on the glacier. We spend two hours here surrounded by this epic alpine scenery, surrounded by the highest mountains in New Zealand. It really is super stunning. I can't stop taking photos. And then we move on to the next feature of this glacier that Tex is super keen to show us, which is an ice cave, or more like an ice wormhole. This ice cave is really cool. It's all about maneuvering your way all the way out of the bottom of this tiny hole. And then when you arrive at the end, you need to maneuver yourself all the way around to be able to stand up in this almost vertical cave in order to be able to climb your way back out of the hole. <laughs> How awkward was that? <laughs> it was a bit awkward. I felt like a hamster in yeah. one of those tubes. In true New Zealand fashion, as soon as we are making our way back to world where the helicopter is going to be coming to pick us up, the weather changes dramatically. The clouds are here, it starts getting really windy and cold on top of the glacier. So it's a great time for us to finish the tour. So we're making our way back toward the makeshift helipad where we're going to be picked back up by the team from in-flight, which is going to take us out of the glacier and back safely to the Mount Cook village. But because the Tasman Glacier is so huge, sizes and distances can be quite deceiving and it actually takes us about 30 minutes to make our way toward the helipad. The helicopter landing is on par with every blockbuster action movie that I've ever seen. Everything is shaking, the wind is battering our clothes, our bags and our faces and boarding the helicopter makes us feel like superhero. I really love taking helicopters and as soon as we are taking off from the glacier, we start getting some views and understanding the views even better because we can see where we were hiking just a few minutes ago. On the way back to Mount Cook Airport, it really feels like the pilot isn't rushing to get back to base, giving us plenty of time to soak up these amazing glacial views and get loads of photos along the way. This is definitely one of the highlights of this tour. I just can't get enough of flying over this area. Again, seeing that amazing Tasman Lake where we can even see icebergs floating in the lake itself and its vibrant blue colors. And not to mention all the mountains and forest around. This really is such an extreme and epic landscape and exactly what many people come to New Zealand for. As we onboard the helicopter, we say a huge thank you to the Mount Cook Glacier guiding team. This has been such an awesome introduction to our Rocky Mount Cook National Park. And now we're hitting the road to Mount Cook Lodge, which is going to be our accommodation for the next few days. Oh, I'm just there. <laughs>